Hey guys, welcome to Trial Fields. Today we're gonna to take a look at how to go from a basic time lapse like this to this. We all know that time lapses are really powerful ways to tell story and to step up our videos. But a lot of the time lapses that I see out there just don't have the right settings. And so I wanted to give you guys five tips to really step up your time lapses. Number one, you need to shoot all in manual settings. Your f-stop, your shutter speed, your ISO, your white balance, your focus, everything needs to be in manual. Otherwise you're gonna get flickering and changes in color and all these different things that are gonna mess up your time lapses. So everything needs to be in manual everything. Tip number two is to use an ND filter. One of the best things that you can do is to slow down your shutter speed for time lapses. And in order to shoot really slow shutter speeds, you need an ND filter or else you're just gonna have way too much light coming in and everything is gonna be blown out. So stick on an ND filter, slow down that shutter speed and you're gonna get really nice motion blur, which is just gonna make your time lapses look way better. This is probably the biggest tip I can give you guys, use slow shutter speeds. Here's an example of a normal shutter speed and now the same video with a slower shutter speed you can right away tell how much better it looks. You need that motion blur for really nice cinematic time lapses. And number three is to use photo and not video for time lapsing. There's a bunch of different reasons for that, but you wanna be taking a bunch of photos, sticking them together into a video. One of the big reasons is that motion blur, slow shutter speed, you can't do that in video. Another one is just you get way more resolution, so you can do a lot more with that time lapse. So what you need to know is that 24 photos makes one second of video footage. So if you need 10 seconds of a time lapse, you're gonna take 240 photos. And remember, the longer the interval between photos, the longer it's gonna take for you to do that time lapse. So for example, if you're doing photos every second versus every four seconds, the one that you do every four seconds is gonna take four times longer to actually complete the whole time lapse. So if you're in a time crunch, don't set your interval too long or else you'll just run out of time and you won't get enough photos. And that leads me to number four, and that's to think about the interval for your time lapse. The shorter the interval, the slower things will move in your time lapse, and the longer the interval, the faster things will move in your time lapse. So you wanna think about what you're shooting, how fast it's moving, and then choose your time interval. For example, if something's moving really fast like people, then maybe you wanna shoot a shorter time interval so things move a little bit slower and they're not so chaotic. But for example, if you're doing a shot of the sky and the clouds are moving really slowly, then you can slow down the interval to let's say four seconds and then it's gonna look a lot better because you're actually gonna see some of that movement in the clouds. And then tip number five is to get some movement in your time lapses. Now the best way to get movement in your time lapses is to actually move the camera as you're doing the time lapse. Here I'm using the Rhino Slider Evo with motion controller so I can actually move the camera slowly as I'm doing the time lapse. This is the best way to get movement in your time lapses because you're actually getting a change in perspective and things in the foreground and background are moving and you're getting this parallaxing. You're not gonna be able to do this if you don't actually move the camera. But if you don't have something like the Rhino Slider, then you can also add a little bit of movement in posts. Some different movements that I like to do are just a zoom in or a zoom out, or you can do a small slide left to right, but these don't quite look as good, but I do like the zoom in and out. And if you wanna go crazy, you can combine the camera movement with a move in post like a zoom in or a zoom out. So there we go, five quick tips for making your time lapses so much better. I'm telling you, if you use these tips, your time lapses will be a hundred times better than this. And if you wanna learn more about time lapsing, you definitely wanna check out the sponsor of this episode, Skillshare. They're a great online learning community with classes on all sorts of stuff, filmmaking, business, photography, design. No matter what you're interested in, there's a class for you. And the best part is it's super affordable. And the first 50 people to sign up get a free two month trial. So start your film school right now. Start learning at Skillshare, go and check it out. I highly recommend it. All right, that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this shorter, quicker, faster format. Quick tips to step up your game. guys. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, enjoy the filmmaking process, and go get some of those travel feels.